This video is all about Nike's design process and what you can learn from it when developing your own soft goods product. Nike have recently shifted their design process towards focusing on producing products with the highest performance impact and the lowest environmental impact. They've produced a guide with 10 circular design principles and in this video I'm going to focus on three of them. Material choices, waste avoidance and versatility. To start with though, what is circular design? So circular design is considering the product and its environmental impact as a whole. So this is right from the start when you're prototyping through to its end of life. Now, a great place to start is to look at your material choices. This is a really important part because the fabrics that you choose can do a lot of the functionality for you. However, each fabric, component and trim has its own environmental impact and you need to consider these if you're going to design sustainably. A great way to do this is to look at your materials list and try and reduce it. If you're sourcing less components, fabrics and trims from different parts of the world, you're not only reducing shipping, but also the environmental impact that your product is going to have. It also helps you streamline the product and in the end can produce a far more considered aesthetic with a more streamlined selection of materials. This also feeds into my next tip, which is to consider your colour palette and try and reduce it. With a product with a million different shades on of different colours can look really confused and in the end not look as high quality. By reducing your colour palette you require less dyes to be made and you can also use them more efficiently. For example, you don't want to produce a massive vat of dye and only use it for one particular trim or a small amount of the product. Now dyes have a really big environmental impact in the textile industry and it's something which um, producers are constantly trying to look at to produce more sustainably with less environmental impact. So if you can reduce the number of dyes, that can have a really positive impact on the environment. Lastly, consider whether you could use recycled content such as recycled polyester or nylon uh, instead of raw virgin materials. This way you can do more with less. Now that moves me on nicely to our second principle that we're going to focus on today, which is waste avoidance. A lot of the Nike initiatives seem like they'd be easier to implement once your business is established. However, at D2M we recognise the responsibility we have as creators to consider the impact we have during the product creation process. Therefore, we often use alternative prototyping methods that avoid waste, such as modifying your previous prototype based on your feedback, rather than making a whole new one. This can often save time as well as cost, and therefore it's really a win-win. We also have the capability of using CAD and automated fabric cutting machines to determine the most cost-effective layout and reduce waste when cutting out large quantities of fabric. As you progress through the development process, you can start to consider how you could adapt your business model to reduce waste. A really good example of this is made-to-order quantities. Now that may seem a little strange at the start, but a really good example of this is a company called Everpress. They are a really good example of how you can use made-to-order quantities when launching a product, and I recommend you go check them out. The final principle that I'd like to focus on today is versatility. Now, versatility is when a product can adapt to growth, style, trend, gender, activity, and purpose. We often have clients return to us after a really successful product launch um, because they've realised that their product could be used for a different use or by a different user. However, a product can be designed with versatility in mind in order to create one that appeals to a wider market or lasts longer. A really good example of this is children's products, especially their clothes. Now, we all know children can grow insanely fast uh, and this often means they grow out their clothes very quickly. This is really wasteful and also can be very expensive for parents. Therefore, check out Petit Please use of pleated fabric in order to make clothing that would expand and grow with the child. It can seem like something you should consider at the end or once you're re-evaluating your product after a successful launch to improve it. But actually, it's something you can consider right at the start. And if you do, you're much more likely to produce a sustainable product further down the line. The need and want for circular design is being driven by the fashion global agenda, but also by consumers who are now demanding that we as designers design more sustainably and consider what we are producing. Now, it may seem like that's a lot to consider at the start, especially when you're developing a new product and you've got all these other things that you need to take into consideration. But as Nike summed it up really well, it's not one single product that has the perfect impact. It's the combination of all the choices we make. If you'd like help in developing your new Softcus product with this in mind, then do get in touch by clicking the links below. Equally, if you'd like some more information about the Softcus design process, then check out this video that gives you a brief overview.